Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a science fiction film, The Incident. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a flash of an old woman on an escalator, and snippets of a newlywed couple. The snippets lead us to the present, when one guy waits for the elevator to open on his floor. Carlos enters his unit. Inside, his brother who is much taller than him, welcomes Carlos with a stutter. Carlos tries to talk to him as he actually has good news to tell, but the tall guy does not listen. Instead, the tall guy starts apologizing, much to Carlos's growing confusion. In an answer, someone speaks and presents himself as a detective. The detective points a gun at them, as he explains the tall guy's confession. In fear of going to the police station, they fight with the detective, and run out of the apartment. Carlos makes sure to bring his backpack with him, as they then run down the stairs. However, a shot to his leg stops both of them. For a moment the detective looks at his gun in surprise, and drops it on the floor. Then, an explosion from somewhere, and a scream from the tall guy puts him back on alert. He picks up his gun, and threatens the two men to go with him. On the first floor, the detective notices more flights of stairs going down. Annoyed, he murmurs about how confusing the building is, and continues going down. 9, 8, 7, and 1, 9 again. They find no end to the stairs. Carlos thinks he is having delusions caused by the bullet in his leg. On the other hand, circumstances anger the detective, who thinks that the two brothers drugged him. In spite of the moment, he orders the two to stay where they are, and runs down the stairs again. All reason leaves him when, after sweating it all, he meets the brothers at the same spot. They now believe they are inside a loop of some sort. Letting the situation sink into their heads, the tall guy's mind also sinks into the fact that his brother is injured, and is gradually losing his life source. He pressures the detective to do something. However, no matter how he trashes him with his words, the detective is just as helpless as they are. At the moment, the only things they have are a pad of painkillers for Carlos, a vending machine of snacks and drinks, and Carlos is back. On another side of the city, a man plays with a little girl. In the same room as they are, a boy is doing his own thing. They are his lover's children. They are preparing for a road trip, and the mother of the house is busy pacing for things they need. They're on the road not long after that. Three hours into their drive, they stop at a gas station to relieve themselves. While waiting for the mother to finish her business first, the man talks to the little girl, and tries to earn her trust. Hence, he offers his drink to the girl. The girl hesitates at first, but after some thought, she takes a sip. Not long after, the mother calls for the girl to also relieve herself. In a display of trust, the girl leaves her most prized possession her inhaler, to the man, and tells him to take care of it for her. The man promises to do so. Back on the road, the mother grows mad at the man, as the little girl struggles for her breath. She is having an asthma attack because of the drink. Beside her, the boy tries to calm her down, but to no avail. They pulled over to attend to her. The man remembers he has the girl's inhaler and hurriedly pulls it out of his chest pocket. However, he must have been full of klutz as he drops the thing on the ground and steps on it. The inhaler becomes a two-part body. The woman snaps at the man as they get back to the car. The boy is in a theater as he watches his mother throwing words at the man, who can only absorb and deflect some of them. Next to the boy, the little girl is busy catching her breath watching the same show. The show escalates as the girl's asthma attack worsens. Nevertheless, a moment of quiet gets between them when an explosion from somewhere booms around their lives. Then, another form of panic creeps into them. For the girl's sake, they are going back their way. Going back for an emergency is taking too long for the mother, as she grows more frantic by the second. The man, on the other hand, is getting confused by each passing moment. He is more than certain that he is driving by the same gas station and road sign a couple of times now. They get back to the gas station again, and try to find help. They find no one. They get back on the road again, and try to calm the girl as much as they can. Soon after, the boy notices something is wrong with the time. The car's time is 7.20, though the sun is still up. It is something the man cannot explain. At that moment, he can only break into tears, as the girl reminds him how much she trusted him, but it is now a disappointment. Getting sight of the same road sign for the umpteenth time now, the man stops the car and gets off. Shock writes on the faces of the boy and the mother, as the man tells them he's finding help on foot. Soon after, they can see him turning his back on them, as he walks through the thorny growths of cacti. Overcome with emotions, the mother gets into the driver's seat and starts the car. Seeing what is happening, the boy reminds his mother about her lack of license, but the mother takes no heed. Instead, she even steps on the accelerator harder as she recites her newfound mantra, this is a dream, wake up Sandra. 
No matter how much the mother has been slapping herself and screaming her mantra, the road still repeats itself. The boy grows weary watching his mother recklessly fighting over the unknown, with his sister now losing consciousness. A pause in the car, and the boy gets off of it and drags his sister with him. Even then, mother gives no care and still steps on the wheels. Off she goes, looping over and over again until she can't bear it anymore. She goes back to the gas station, and curls herself into a helpless ball. On the road, the boy lays with his sister, who shows no sign of waking up. He is about to lay down himself, when he sees a spot of red growing in the distance. It is the man. He stands up and tries to get closer to him. His face does not show it, but he is hoping for good news from the man. The man gives him just plain news, we're trapped. The sun never goes down after the incidents. It never takes a rest, even after the walls by the stairs are covered with ink. Every single day is accounted for on the walls, with a conclusion after several lines. Nth year after the incident, that N is now 35. On the other hand, the guys on the staircase no longer have their youth, but one can say that they cope well with time and the twists it gives. Fortunately for the ones who keep breathing after the incident, their resources replenish automatically as time repeats itself. Everything, from the snacks in the vendo, to Carlos's stuff in his backpack, multiplies to the point of commercial hoarding. They arrange everything, and live as if the staircase is their home. One level has all the things that multiply from the backpack, books, red and black sharpies, pools of thread, nail cutters, MP3 players, and headsets. Another level has a makeshift shower made of water bottles. Then another level has their garbage and bottles of digestive disregard. The rest of the levels are their rooms. One only has the skeletal remains of Carlos to live in there, and a growing stack of money. The tall guy and the detective pass their time differently. The tall guy exercises a lot, using the stairs as his treadmill, while the detective exercises his brain. They also spend time together, as the tall guy asks the detective about his wife and children while he is training his upper body. Another exercise for the tall guy is lifting the detective up and down the stairs, as the detective cannot walk anymore. On the other hand, the other side of the city is the very opposite of the staircase scenario. The looping road has everything messy on it, broken bottles of alcohol, unfinished bags of potato chips, and a car decorated with trashed garments. The man and the kid's mother stay there. As a result of his poverty, the man has become Santa Claus. The mother, on the other hand, has no words nor sanity in her, even when the man humps her in the car for pleasure. The boy, on the other hand, now a quiet man, stays on the prairie. Unlike his guardians, he lives in order. He has a shelter made of jumpsuits and his own cooking utilities. He makes food from cactus, and has a steady supply of water as time repeats itself. 35 years of time looping itself, the boy now has a mound of inhalers in one part of the prairie. This time, he throws another one on it, and goes back to his shelter. On the way there, he sees the man leaning against his car with a drink in hand. He approaches him without a word, and stands before him, waiting for him to speak. The man talks to the boy. However, there is something important that he cannot remember. Blaming old age for it, he says, that's how old we are, Daniel. At that very moment, the detective, who is lying down and has been repeating his name to himself, spurts out the very same words as the man says. That's how old we are, Daniel. In a flash of insight, the detective repeats the words to himself, and in a flash of insight, calls out for the tall guy. The tall guy screams back in complaint, as his watch tells him it is three in the morning. However, he still goes down to check on the detective. Unlike the man who cannot remember what he has to say to the boy, the detective remembers everything. However, he tells the tall guy that he will leave the earth as soon as he shares it. The tall guy finds that unreasonable, and turns around to go back to sleep. At that, the detective asks the tall guy to bring him to the mural. Aside from the tally of days, another part of the wall exhibits everything about the detective's life, his wife and daughters and the important days they celebrate. However, the detective realizes that everything in the room is not real. Not one single thing is real about the identity he has. I am Daniel, he exclaims as he scratches everything on the wall with a sharpie. He confesses that the time loop happens because of him and that Carlos is a sacrifice to start it. Again and again, he yells his real name as memories consume him one by one. He remembers talking to a man about his mother whose grave the man is digging. He remembers calming that same old man on the ground talking about living 35 years in a lake without a night. The story was when the man was a boy of 10. He went on a school field trip with his friend, but they missed their canoe. At that, an instructor offered to take them on a bamboo raft. However, they got into an accident, and his friend lost his life. 
For the next 35 years, he and the instructor sailed the lake in a time loop, until the instructor told him about an eternal train he lived in, 35 years before they met. The instructor warned him to write down his name, or he'll forget as soon as he enters a red car. The instructor died soon after. Now, the detective remembers it, too. The man had told him the same thing about remembering his name, and a patrol car he was not supposed to get into. He did not listen, and as a result, unintentionally created the loop in the staircase. He remembers it all now, and he finds himself saying the same warning to the tall guy. The tall guy should never take the elevator. For at first, one will be a victim trapped in the loop. Then, he will be the creator without his knowledge. That is how it goes if you enter the forbidden platform, and forget your name. Everything in the loop is an alternate reality, a parallel universe. The detective explains that whatever they do in the loop, reflects the state of their true selves in real life. However, they will never be able to live that life. It's either they die in that loop along with the knowledge of it, or they forget everything and create another one to live another 35 years. The movie ends with the tall guy leaving the lifeless detective. He gets on the elevator, and assumes a new identity. He is Carl, a hotel boy. A moment later, a newlywed couple enters, and he guides them to their room. But before they can even get closer to their room, the tall guy releases a bee. It stings the groom, and at that very moment, an explosion resounds. The tall guy creates another looping incident without his knowledge. This time the bride will go through it with him, and suffer the aging and loneliness there. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.